Morning, guys. Yeah, so lots of virtual workshops to choose from. And then there's, there's even uh, one about insect collecting that you can actually do that's part in person, part online. I've got the instructor here, Sadie. Um, can you tell us about this uh, series and kind of the logistics of the in-person online? Yeah, definitely. So this series is all sparked um, with my passion of entomology and collecting insects. So in order to attend the four-part series that we'll be having, we have an orientation kind of introduction series that is free virtually and that's on Monday February 1st at 6 p.m. Got to go to that. Yes okay. definitely you have to go to that in order to sign up for the series because there's a lot that goes into it and it's important that you're aware of those before you sign up. Gotcha. Um, so yeah it's a four-part series and it'll go through the entire process of collecting. So we'll start out with insect identification, insect pinning, and insect display where you'll actually build your own um, at home insect display using the insects you find in your garden. And why is it important to learn about the insects that roam your garden? Insects are extremely important. They're all around us every single day. And as a gardener, I think you kind of reach the level where you notice different things are happening in your garden throughout the year. And it's really important to know what insects you have because it affects your pollination, your seed production, um, food for other wildlife in your garden. So it's extremely important. And I think a lot of people miss that when they're gardening. And once you get into it, um, you find very quickly that there's a lot of really. I was going to say, give us happening. an example because you have so many insects here. So what what can we learn from at least one or two of these? Yes, our definitely. Garden? So two that I really come to mind are different types of dragonflies, which I have a huge collection here. Um, so these are really good indicators on different types and levels of water quality. So if you have a water feature or a lake, something like that, you can tell a lot about your water quality via the types of dragonflies that you find in your own yard. Another example is we have this really cute hummingbird moth. Um, and this is something that mimics the hummingbird um, by its proboscis that looks like a beak. And those are really common around tubular flowers because it puts its little proboscis in the tubular flower to get all the nectar at the bottom. Okay. Um, so if you have really good blooms, uh, say like buddleias or butterfly bush, that's something that you can find in your garden. Super cool. Make sure you sign up for that introductory course because you got to sign up for that uh, to get through the rest of it. And what Sadie had said, Julie, Carrie, Matt, is that this is so cool because a lot of people started gardening last year uh, during the pandemic to get outside and have something to do. So this is a good um, thing for those beginning gardeners to kind of learn a little bit more about what's happening in their garden. That is true. There are a lot of people that became plant parents yeah. last year. So love it. Alex.